Hey, Pretty Girl Club. Welcome to Pretty Girl University. Class is starting. <laughs> the Pretty Girl University now has over 16,784 students. The Pretty Girl University series is going to be about the level up side of this YouTube channel. Um, I've made so many videos on this topic to the point where let's just go ahead and make it a university because that's pretty much what this is. A lot of people, once they get around the pretty girl, they act like they're in a university because they're taking notes on your appearance, they're copying everything you do, and you're pretty much their teacher. So today the lecture is going to be on your beauty identity. What is your beauty identity? So when I use that term, what I mean is what aspects of your beauty are your favorite? So it could be your skin tone, it could be your hair texture. No, it doesn't mean you're a colorist or texturist. I've noticed that some people have a mindset where you can only view your skin as contributing to your beauty if you have a dark skin tone. I personally think that anybody's skin can contribute to their beauty. So what are your standout beauty features? Is it your eyes, your hair color? Is it your ability to morph yourself into whatever you want to? So for example, like me, you guys know that my beauty standard is versatile beauty. I like fluid beauty. That's my standard for myself. So I'm the type of person where I like to be able to go in and out of makeup or in and out of extensions because I like the fluidity that comes with that type of beauty. One thing I've noticed is that whenever you stand out in terms of your beauty, a lot of people like to blame it on popular beauty standards, and I do think that popular beauty standards, um, they contribute to what people find beautiful, so I, I definitely believe that. This is a part of why I like to support women in the media who look like myself, but I actually think that beauty is really a skill that can be learned. You know how they say you're not ugly, you're just poor? They also have a lot of articles that talk about how oftentimes the women who are thin and healthy and the women who... Um, can go vegan and vegetarian and do all of these special diets, oftentimes there is a gap. And when it comes to impoverished people, they have a harder time having access to those types of foods, like the fancy organic stuff or like grass-fed beef. Your money actually contributes to your ability to be beautiful. So I know that's a controversial talking point, but I do believe that beauty, it costs time or money. So you have to decide for yourself Am I willing to put in the time to grow my hair out or am I willing to put in the money to purchase some extensions and have the long hair tomorrow? Because no matter what you're doing in this world, it's going to cost you either time or money. And so a lot of people who have victim mentalities, they like to just give up. Like they won't even put in any effort into their appearance because they'll be like, oh, well, I was already born so far away from the beauty standards, so I might as well not try. And those women end up becoming the basic Bettys later on who will try to bully the pretty girl as a way to even the social playing field. I talk about social climbing on this channel. I also talk about social hierarchies. Um, beauty is something that a lot of people place on a pedestal whether you like it or not. So you can pretend to be this noble person who like doesn't care about how you look but other people are going to care about how you look and other people are going to stereotype you based on how you look. And I know that it's bad and people shouldn't do that, but one way that you can use that to your advantage is you can ask yourself, what positive stereotypes do I want to be associated with? Because for example, let's say you have a dark chocolate skin tone. Um, some of the positive stereotypes that I associate dark chocolate skin tones with is beauty, athleticism, I tend to associate those skin tones with kind of like high fashion modeling, like being elegant. So you can look inside of yourself and think to yourself, are there any features where I associate positive stereotypes with them? Do I want to play into those stereotypes and use them to my advantage? So for example, let's say you naturally look like how Beyonce looks, you have that phenotype. I associate Beyonce with glamour. I associate her with like sparkles. I think of all the sparkly dresses she would wear and stuff when I was growing up. So that is a positive stereotype in my mind. So I can decide, okay, if I naturally look more like that, do I want to play into that stereotype and kind of play into my glamour? And I know some people are gonna say, oh, it's bad, like you shouldn't play into stereotypes, but you're being stereotyped whether you realize it or not. And you yourself are stereotyping others whether you realize it. You just stereotyped me by assuming that I am promoting 
bad beauty standards or that I'm promoting like being shallow. We live in a shallow society. So if you want to argue, you should go argue with the people who are in charge of the society, not a random content creator on YouTube. But one of the foundations of my beauty is having a beauty routine. And by the way, this, this video is talking about physical beauty. But I want to do an exercise with you right now. I want you to think about the time in your life when you felt the most physically beautiful. Is it right now? Was it when you were a teenager? Were you in your early 20s? What made you beautiful? Was it the fact that you were skinnier? Was it that your stomach was flat? What made you feel so confident in your physical appearance at that time? I know that for me, um, the time where I felt the most beautiful was probably when I was in my early 20s. And then I thought about it. I was like, why did I feel so beautiful back then? And it's because I spent hours meticulously planning my grocery list. Like I specifically would eat um, fruits. I would have fruit smoothies for breakfast. I would have like enough protein. My diet was like damn near perfect. And so because of that, my body was damn near perfect. And I also remember I used to spend hours. It was literally my hobby to make my own homemade beauty products from scratch. So on the weekends when I was in my early 20s, I didn't really have much going on. I had just graduated college. So whenever I wasn't working, I would go to Trader Joe's and I would get some honey and then I would make like a, a hair mask or a face mask. I remember that was when I grew my hair out 13 inches because I was making all of my own products. I was making face washes and that was when I felt the most beautiful. And the reason I felt beautiful was because I was investing time into my beauty because obviously I didn't really have money. I was just in my early 20s. But I want you to think about when you felt the most beautiful and why you felt the most beautiful. And also, what was your lifestyle like at that time? Were you male-centered? Because I know for me, a part of why I felt so beautiful at that time was because I didn't have a relationship. I wasn't in any relationship drama. I wasn't in some sort of bad marriage or a dead marriage or something like that. I literally had all the time in the world to do my hobbies. I remember I had just cut off my toxic friend group at that time because they were always very boy crazy. There was so much drama. And I remember once I cut off those toxic girls, I had so much more peace. I had so much free time. I wasn't worried about people pleasing like, oh, if I don't show up to hang out with Ashley, she's going to get mad at me and then she's going to call me fake. I didn't have to worry about anything like that. So when I talk about finding your beauty identity, I'm not just talking about doing hair masks and stuff like that. I'm also talking about things that reduce your stress. So I know that for me, when I did not have those toxic friends, that helped me to be less stressed. Another thing that happened to me was after I got a divorce in my late 20s, I actually, I looked back at pictures of myself. I looked older at 27 than I do now. So I remember when I got a divorce, all of that stress from the marriage, it literally affected my actual body. I remember I lost weight. The wrinkles in my face literally started melting away because I was not frowning as much. I wasn't like making sad faces as much. I remember I was able to eat healthier and shop at Whole Foods because I didn't have a husband complaining saying, why are you spending all the money at Whole Foods? Why are you shopping at Trader Joe's? Nobody was complaining. So I didn't have to worry about people putting me down. And so that actually affected my physical beauty. And by the way, make sure you guys check out Dulce K's um, video that she recently posted. If you are a light skinned black woman, um, she posted a video where she has affirmations on there. And that's another thing that can contribute to your physical beauty because it helps you to change your perception of your own beauty. I will say that when it comes to affirmations, some people believe in them, some people may, may not believe in them, but I personally do believe in them. I don't consider myself to be like a religious or spiritual person, but I do understand the science behind uh, your words and like how your words matter. Just like when people try to put you down, let's say your parents put you down or your parents called you ugly and stuff and you internalize that, humans internalize words. And so it is important to also say affirmations or you can just think affirmations. Also, side note, I even have a playlist on my phone where I have, it's basically a female rapper playlist. So I have all the songs uh, from women who look like me and they're rappers and stuff. And they talk about kind of like being a baddie and like being a bad bitch or whatever. And listening to that type of music, it actually helps me to get in the mindset of, yeah, I'm a baddie. So it gets me pumped up to like work out as opposed to listening to some song where, where the girl is depressed about a guy or something. 
So those are other things that have contributed to my beauty identity. So when I think of the most beautiful version of myself, I think of a girl who eats healthy, a girl who um, has her own workout routine. She has like self-care routines, like journaling and stuff. I, I am very much into um, writing down my goals. I just, I like to write naturally. So I will write down my goals. Sometimes I will take notes for these videos, especially if the video is a longer one. But I'm very into note taking. I'm very into journaling because that helps me to feel organized. And one thing I've noticed is that a lot of times when people are jealous of your beauty, they're not necessarily jealous of your physical beauty. They are jealous of the lifestyle that is attached to your beauty. They're jealous of your pretty privilege. They're jealous of the pedestal that you get put on. They're jealous of how you get treated in society. They're jealous of the fact that like when they go to the airport, nobody gets their luggage off of the airplane. And then when you go to the airport, People, uh, they take your luggage out of the overhead compartment. They help you. You know, if you drop something, a man comes and picks it up. I never considered those things pretty privileged until other women started saying that they have never experienced that. I thought that every girl can go to a bar and some guy will buy her a drink. I thought that any girl could like, I don't know, some guy tries to talk to her or something or she gets free stuff. I thought that was a normal experience for being a girl. So it wasn't until other women who did not feel like they had beauty, it wasn't until they started talking about how much it sucks to the point where I realized that there are actually different pedestals that people place you on to the point where it does affect your everyday life. And by the way, there is no right or wrong way to utilize your beauty identity. I've noticed that a lot of people, they want to pressure you into becoming some sort of supermodel if you are pretty. They're like, oh, well, why don't you do modeling? Why didn't you start a business? Why didn't you start a hair care line? And it's like, not every woman wants to hinge her finances on her beauty because there are some women who they like to enjoy their beauty almost as like a dessert. So it's not the main dish when it comes to your confidence. Maybe it's more of a dessert where it's like, I don't have to live off of my beauty, but I also enjoy that my life is easier because of it. I am a big proponent of the mindset that beauty helps you to build confidence because when you gain skill in how to do your makeup, how to do your hair, how to know which colors match well with your undertones, how to lift weights, how to build a butt in the gym, all of these skills that you are learning in your journey to attain beauty, those are actually skills that can be transferred over into other areas of your life. So for example, in order to have a body that is very in shape and like a perfect hourglass and a flat stomach, that takes a lot of discipline. Discipline is a fantastic quality that you can take into building a business or like you can transfer those skills over into other areas. So that's why I'm such a big proponent of beauty because I feel like beauty is a very easy and very fun gateway for a lot of women to start to build self-esteem outside of just beauty because now you know how to do manicures, you know how to do lashes, you know how to do all these different things and this is how women end up starting their own lash business, starting their own nail salon because it all started with simply pampering themselves and treating themselves like a real life Barbie doll. Also, for me, taking back ownership over my own beauty, that helped me to appreciate myself more as opposed to constantly morphing myself into whatever others said I should be. Have you guys ever noticed how when you were the pretty girl, people feel the need to comment on your looks, they feel the need to critique you, they feel like they can tell you, oh no, you should have worn this other outfit, oh no, you need to lose weight. And they're only saying that because you are on a higher position than them in the social hierarchy in their minds. So when I use terms like social hierarchy, I'm talking about the subconscious mindset that a lot of people have that they don't even realize that they have. So treating the pretty girl like she's special or treating the pretty girl like she's your enemy because you're threatened by her beauty, but then you don't admit this to yourself. This channel focuses on speaking the unspoken. So I talk about a lot of things that others are too afraid to admit or things that others are too afraid to like talk about. So I do believe that humans naturally place themselves and others on a social hierarchy. And I think that every person has a different social hierarchy in their minds. Some people will pedestalize you if you're rich. Some people will pedestalize you if you're a white person. Others will pedestalize you if you were skinny. Um, so I believe that 
beauty is actually a very simple and effective way to kind of social climb. And when I say social climb, I mean social climb amongst whatever community you choose to do that in. Because sometimes when I say social climb, people think I'm talking about like, you need to go be the next Beyonce and be famous and be in Hollywood. That's not what I'm talking about. Not everyone's going to want to go to Hollywood, but maybe you want to be the popular girl in college, or maybe you want to start your own business and you want people to trust you because maybe you want to have a fitness business. And so you want your body to look very beautiful so that it can be kind of like an advertisement for your business. Maybe you want to be the, the first person in your family to become a millionaire, or there's some sort of barrier that you want to break. And so that's what I mean when I use the term social climbing. It's about breaking barriers. It's about opening doors for yourself, whatever doors you want to open. For some people, it might be maybe you want a relationship or something like that. This is a decentering men channel, but I understand for some people, maybe that's important for them. And maybe that's what they want to use their beauty for, or you want to get money out of people. But another way that you can begin to build your beauty identity is calling yourself by terms of endearment, like nicknames, finding different ways to describe yourself. I noticed that for me, finding different ways to describe myself helped me to have a stronger sense of identity. So for example, um, let's talk about skin tone. Maybe sometimes you feel like your skin is peanut butter. Other times you feel like it's caramel. Sometimes you feel like you're butter pecan or more of a butterscotch or more of a toffee color. For me personally, getting familiar with my skin tone range and like kind of where my skin tone fluctuates, that actually made it easier for me to shop for makeup. So whenever I was trying a new foundation or something, if it said tan or sand or something along those lines, golden, sun-kissed, if it said words that I have used to describe myself, it helped me to feel like, okay, that foundation shade is probably going to be somewhere within my range. So even if it's not that exact foundation, that's my perfect color. I know that it's going to be within two to three shades, then I'll be able to find my perfect color. So that actually helped me to get better at color theory, but with my own skin tone. And the same thing goes with colors like chocolate, like with hair color, I realized that chocolate, it looks pretty much black on my skin tone. Like it looks like it's almost black. It doesn't look very highlighted because there's such a big gap between my skin tone and like a chocolatey color. And so whenever I was shopping for extensions, I knew like, okay, if it has chocolate highlights, I know I'm going to have more of a dark haired brunette look as opposed to caramel or golden. By the way, golden, that's actually my favorite. That's one of my favorite highlight colors when it comes to extensions and wigs. But one of the other ways that I took ownership of my own beauty identity is Whenever I was watching like YouTube channels, you know how they have the beauty channels where they do makeup or they do hair and stuff. So when it came to hair, I do watch hair YouTubers of all races and all hair textures. But when it comes to my favorite, like my staple hair product gurus, I try to pick women who have a similar hair texture to mine. So like within one to two um, levels, you know how they do the hair texture scale. I know that it's not a perfect scale. Everybody seems to have a different name for the different hair textures. But if the person in the thumbnail kind of looks like me in terms of hair, then I tend to pay more attention to what they're saying because I've noticed that for the most part, those routines do work best on me. And I also do believe in trickle down beauty economics. I believe that, <laughs> that's so funny, I literally just made that up off the top of my head. <laughs> I'm trying to make it sound all professional because I'm your professor today. But no, I do believe in the concept of trickle down beauty if the people actually look like you. So it's very important to me to support music artists who have my phenotype. So they don't have to look like my twin, but if they generally have a similar skin tone to me, similar facial features, similar hair texture, if they're also mixed race black women, that's a plus. So I really do believe in the concept of trickle down beauty. So I go out of my way to support women who are up and coming. I don't care if you're not the most talented. I don't care if your music isn't groundbreaking. I will purposely follow music artists and stuff and just try to give them a chance because I understand how important it is for my phenotype to continue to have visibility. So it's not about putting down other beauty types. It's just about me supporting my own, uh, my own phenotype. So I try to do the same thing when it comes to YouTube. If I see a hair YouTuber and she looks like me or she looks like she could be my sister or my family member, 
I am more likely to just hit the subscribe button. For a lot of the unambiguous black women that got mad at women with curly hair textures, they were mad because the curly haired women, they had the support of us mixed black women, but they also had the support of unambiguous women who looked nothing like them. So they messed up in their social climbing by not placing their own phenotype, their natural phenotype, at the center of their agendas. So instead they used us to represent them. So then we got double the support. We got support of people who look like us and we also got the support of those who didn't look like us. And so if you are like me and you care a lot about social power, because I know that I care about that, I, I do care about things like power and control. And I'm not saying that I want to control others or I want to have power over others, but I do want to feel like I have a, a community, like I have a safe space. I want to feel like I have women out there who look like me, who inspire me. So that's what I mean when I say power and control. It's not about dominating others or like trying to look down on other people. It's about empowering myself and it's about controlling myself and having the discipline to be able to level up. And so whenever I see other women who look like me and they're leveling up, that inspires me as opposed to all the girls who are leveled up look nothing like me. No, I am a big supporter of beauty economics. And remember, the more popular a certain type of beauty gets, the more of a beauty standard it will be. So I talked in other videos about how beauty is visibility. Visibility is beauty. So this is why I want women who look like me to be very visible. Um, I try to support women with my skin tone who have my hair texture, women with my skin tone who don't have my hair texture. So I, I like to pick and choose. Um, so for some of you, you might feel more drawn to beauty role models who share your skin tone. For others, it's women who share your hair texture. But you get to decide what the core beauty identity is for you. What defines your physical beauty? Is it your eyes, your eye color, eye shape? Is it your cheekbones? Is it your skin tone? If you had to pick one defining feature about your beauty that you never wanted to lose, what would it be? Would it be your body shape? Would it be your height? Would it be your nose? I know there are some people who really love their noses. I know that when I was deciding what I wanted my beauty identity to be, I was thinking about that. Like, okay, which features of mine do I like the most? And for me, it's pretty much, I would say my midsection. Like I like the whole hourglass Coke bottle shape type of thing. And so that's what made me decide, okay, I really love crop tops then. Like I'm gonna always try to wear a crop top winter, spring, summer, fall. It could be a cropped jacket, a cropped hoodie, a cropped long sleeve shirt, a cropped tank top, strapless. No matter what it is, I want it to be cropped because that is one of the defining factors of my beauty, in my opinion. I like my waist to hip ratio, and so I try to accentuate that as much as possible. So you're not gonna see me in a big giant hoodie where it's like super baggy and completely covering up my shape. You're probably not gonna see me wearing that. But what I like to do is I like to go feature by feature through my whole body and decide what is the biggest standout beauty about my hair? What is, what is the biggest thing that I like about my eyebrows? What do I like most about my skin tone? I know for me, with my skin, I love that I have neutral undertones. That's very rare. I have both warm and cool undertones. Um, depending on how I tan, it can affect like, it, it switches the undertones. So for example, I notice that if I become very pale, like in the winter or something like that, then my cool undertones like really, really stand out. And then if I get very, very tan, you start to see a little bit more warmth in my undertone. So that is one of the defining beauty points of my particular skin tone is I get to pick and choose how many cool undertones do I want to bring out today? How many warm undertones do I want to bring out today? Okay, I'm gonna wear this blue shirt. Blue is like one of my best colors, pink and blue. Um, so I'll be like, okay, let me wear this powder blue dress because it's accentuating my shape. It's a beautiful color. Like I've, I've worn a powder blue sundress. It's kind of like a form fitting one and people will literally compliment me. They'll be like, oh, I love that blue on you. Like that looks so good. So that's one of the things about my skin tone that I like the most. And so I want you guys to do this exercise where you start thinking about each feature of your body and what do you like best about it? So for example, I, I can use my hair as an example. So what do I like the best about my hair? Is it the texture of it? Is it my hair color? Is it the hair length? What I like best about my hair is actually 
it's my hair color. I love the fact that it's very black. I like that when I put gel on it, it becomes super black, like super jet black, literally looks fake. And then I like how if I don't put any gel on it and I let it become dry, not dry like breaking off, but if I let it become very dry and I let it kind of blow in the wind, then you start to see a little bit of a natural, almost chocolatey undertone like highlight to my natural black hair. It's to the point where when I used to wear my hair like that in college, people would be like, oh, the girl, she has kind of brownish blackish hair. And I used to be like, I don't have brown hair. My hair is jet black. But then when I look back at the pictures, if you went in the sunlight, I did have a little bit of chocolatiness in there when my hair was dry. So like there's no gel in it or anything like that. So that's my favorite defining factor about my hair. So for some of you, maybe it's your hair length. Maybe like for me, it used to be my hair length back when I used to wear my hair super long and natural all the time. And so I used to revolve my beauty hobbies around my favorite features. And that was a way of building up my confidence. So when I use the term beauty hobbies, that's another thing I want you to ask yourself. What are your beauty hobbies? Do you like having pretty skin? So you like making the face masks and stuff? Are you one of those people who goes into Marshalls or TJ Maxx or one of those stores where they have the face mask just on the side of the aisle and you just pick up a face mask because you really like that? What are your beauty hobbies? Do you like making your own DIY hair masks? I know that's something I used to do. Um, I actually, before I started recording this, I put some olive oil in my hair. I am obsessed, by the way, that's one of my beauty hobbies. I am obsessed with oils. I love oils. People sleep on oils so much. I'm not just talking about olive oil. I'm talking about olive oil, um, essential oils, coconut oil, any sort of oil, I am going to find a way to use it. I'm going to find a way to beautify my skin, to beautify my hair. Like I've literally, I have put drops of essential oil into my cuticle oil that I use on my nails. Like when I do my cuticles and when I do my little manicures, I use oil on my hair. I like putting it in the bath. Sometimes I will add essential oils to my perfume, like if I want them to smell more fruity or something like that, or I'll put it in uh, my shampoo, put it in my conditioner. I'm obsessed with oils. That is one of my beauty hobbies. I love going on Google in my spare time and just looking up. What are the benefits of coconut oil? I literally have used coconut oil um, to do oil pulling. I do oil pulling almost every day. That's literally where you just hold the oil in your mouth, kind of like a mouthwash. I have gotten rid of cavities that way. I have not had to get certain teeth pulled because of oil pulling. So that's one of my beauty hobbies is anything with an oil. Every time I'm in Whole Foods, I will go through the aisle and be like, okay, what kind of oils do they have here? Like recently I just got some grapeseed oil because grapeseed oil is good for uh, putting on the ends of your hair. So I was using that just for like length retention because right now I am just growing out my hair for summer. I don't know why, I'm very like inconsistent with my beauty goals. I like to switch them up depending on the seasons. So now that we're like entering into spring and it's about to be summertime, now suddenly I care about my hair. So I literally was like not caring the entire year. It's still long or whatever, it's not breaking off or anything but I was being lazy the entire year, but now I'm like, oh no, summer's coming up, I'm gonna be going swimming. So now I'm doing this whole hair training thing, I'm kind of training my curls, but I am obsessed with oils. That's one of my beauty hobbies. So what are your beauty hobbies? Have you given up your beauty hobbies because you're taking care of kids or you're like taking care of your family or something? So maybe you've been kind of like neglecting your beauty hobbies and maybe you've fallen off. Because one thing I've noticed is that a lot of girls who get jealous of the pretty girl or the girls who try to copy you, they're not necessarily trying to look exactly like you because they know that they don't have your face, they don't have your body, but oftentimes they will just copy your beauty hobbies. They'll copy the colors you wear. They will copy how you um, organize your outfits, how you put your outfit together. Maybe you're really good at matching your belt to your shoes, to your purse. Maybe you're really good at accessorizing. That's your beauty hobby. You love all of the beautiful jewelry and stuff like that. Oftentimes when people put you on a pedestal, um, what they don't realize is your beauty hobbies that you were doing behind the scenes, that was making you more physically beautiful. So learning the skill on how to use these different oils, how to accessorize, how to like look good um, in my skin tone, how to dress for my body type. 
I know for me, I recently got into weightlifting, not heavy weights though, because I hate lifting heavy weights. Oh my God, like no, cringe. I know for some of you guys, you're very good at lifting weights, but I've been getting into kind of using more of the machines at the gym, trying to build a little bit of muscle so that by the time summer comes, I've got like some tone in my legs. You know, I have like the tone abs or whatever. That's one of my other beauty hobbies. And the reason that I call this the Pretty Girl University is because one of my beauty hobbies is I like to watch content for at least about 30 minutes to one hour a day. Usually it's when I'm working out. I like to watch content where it is helping me to increase my beauty. So whatever beauty means to you. So for me right now in this video, we're talking about physical beauty. So that's what I've been watching videos on lately. And the reason I time it and I say, hey, I wanna do it for at least one hour a day is because that's what people do when they're in university. The way that you earn your degree is because you have done a hundred and something credit hours in learning that skill and that's how you have the degree. So the way that I think of it is, hey, by the time I'm 35, so like three years from now, I'm 32, by the time I'm 35, I want to have damn near a bachelor's degree in skincare so that I know how to care for my skin, so that I know how to, I don't know, well, skincare is actually not my beauty hobby, so let me change it. I wanna have basically a bachelor's degree in oils. So I wanna be able to walk into my kitchen and literally get one of my cooking oils and utilize it all over the house. Like I've used oils before to clean like essential oils, putting a couple drops in there and spraying it, wiping down the counters and stuff or even using it as a toner. So that's why I call this Pretty Girl University because I want you guys here in the Pretty Girl Club to start thinking, what is my beauty hobby? Um, for some of you, maybe you are really into your feet, like caring for your feet. My mom is like that. She does her own pedicures. She has the pumice stone thing. She like scrubs her feet. Her feet are like super soft. So it can be any aspect of your beauty, but doing things like that, pampering yourself, you are actually, building your self-esteem, even if it's something as simple as your feet look good. It's like, hey, at least my feet aren't crusty. But another one of my beauty hobbies, so when it comes to the oils, like my obsession with oils, because they have really changed my life. Like I've healed cavities with oils. I've grown my hair 13 inches with oils. I've like done so many different things with oils. I have even rubbed oil on my muscles. Um, so you guys know that I like doing lots of hiking and running and kind of like these more tough cardio workouts. So whenever I'm sore, I will sometimes put like coconut oil and a little bit of peppermint and rub it on those sore muscles. Even if I get a really weird tan line or something, I'll do some coconut oil with some lemon or some sort of fruit oil where kind of the citric acid will help to brighten the area. So I, I just do all kinds of things with oils. But what are your pretty girl hobbies? Another hobby I used to do was creating my own hair products. So I would use literally bentonite clay. My bathroom would look a hot mess and I, I would always clog up the bathroom sink. So that's a warning when it comes to making masks and stuff. But I recently went to Target and I got some Drano last weekend because I'm probably gonna start doing my different masks. One of my other beauty hobbies is, you guys know I love hairstyling. So it can be fake hair, it can be my real hair. I love just having the versatility of doing all of these different, very unique hairstyles. So sometimes I will come on here and I'll be like, yeah, sometimes when I wear the synthetic hair, people think it's real. And then some of you guys will be like, oh no, they know that it's fake. But no, some, sometimes people do think it's actually real because of the hairstyles that I do. They're not the types of styles that I've seen on YouTube. It's not like just basic, I just glue a wig down to my forehead or something. No, it's me like going out of my way, spending 30 minutes doing like a half up, half down, or like trying to figure out how to put my hair in two French braids, but then I put some braiding hair in there, but you can't see where the braiding hair starts and it blends in with my hair and I use so little braiding hair to the point where you literally, you would not be able to tell. But that's another one of my beauty hobbies is experimenting with different hairstyles, um, trying different hair colors. You guys who are in the Discord, by the way, join the Patreon and you will get Discord access. The Patreon's only $5 a month. But for those of you who are in the Discord, you guys know that I love going to random beauty supply stores and I love looking at the different wigs and all the different hair, like the crochet hair. It's just so cool and fascinating to me. And I like going in front of the mirror and kind of like looking at the different hair colors next to my skin tone. And then I can be like, wow, okay, this makes me look 
very like Afrocentric. I'm kind of giving like more of a Caribbean vibe with this hairstyle. So you guys know that one time I tried to do my own passion twist. Um, it didn't look bad. I just, the twist kept, they kept falling out of my hair. But when I wore the long passion twist and then I had like a little silk scarf or some sort of bandana on the top of my head, I felt like I looked like this Caribbean kind of like pirate mermaid goddess. You guys also know that I'm into cosplaying. So I'm probably going to go to a cosplay festival this spring. And so I was thinking of dressing up as a mermaid. So now I'm excited because one of my beauty hobbies is hair. So I get to try to find some sort of mermaid looking extensions or a ponytail. Maybe I'll do like a lavender wig or something. So that's what I mean when I say beauty hobbies. I mean, thinking about all of the different creative ways that you can beautify yourself. So for some of you, you might like some of the glam stuff like me, kind of the fake stuff. And then for others, maybe you like natural stuff. You like the oils, you like making your own perfumes. That's something that I have never done, but I have friends who they like making their own perfumes. They will make like oils. I know that for me, I have made my own lip glosses before and made my own lip colors. I literally would just blend some sort of powder. It could be like eyeshadow or something like that. And I have blended it in with like Vaseline or coconut oil and just tried to mix my own colors. I've done so many different like random things when it comes to beauty hobbies. And by the way, when I talk about living the soft life on this YouTube channel, I believe that beauty hobbies are a big part of the soft life because think about the definition of soft life. It means that you don't have to spend all of your time thinking about, oh my God, how am I going to pay my bills? You get to have the luxury of thinking about what color am I going to paint my nails? How am I going to wear my hair to this music festival? Um, what color lipstick am I going to wear? In my opinion, that's the soft life. Like when I think of the softest times in my life, it was when I was not stressing about anything and when my thoughts were about softer things. So I want to do this exercise with you right now. Think about the time in your life where it was the softest. Were you a child? Were you a teenager in your early 20s? Is it right now? And whenever your life was the softest, what kinds of thoughts were you thinking on a daily basis? Were you thinking about when your next vacation is or like packing for a vacation? Were you thinking about it's payday and now I get to go to Sephora. What types of thoughts were you thinking when you were living the softest life? Because that's going to give you a clue as to what your definition of the soft life actually is. I know that for me, when I can think of some of the softest moments of my life, I have one memory that stands out. It is when I was by myself. Um, I was walking on a trail. But this trail, it would go kind of like into the middle of the city. So you know how they have those boardwalk type of things where like people are skateboarding, people are rollerblading. So I was walking on a little boardwalk like that and I got to watch all of the other people skateboarding and like biking and just kind of living their best lives. And by the way, I also looked cute when I was walking down this little path and then I just saw hundreds of other people also walking and kind of appearing to be carefree. There were no homeless people on the street. There were no people harassing me. Everybody was just living their best lives, walking their dogs, whatever. So I remember walking down that trail and I walked over to a Trader Joe's because that's one of my favorite places. So I remember walking to Trader Joe's. I got myself a little snack, like a little water bottle because I had just finished walking. I also remember sometimes walking on the trails and then stopping at a Starbucks if I'm like walking in and out of the city. So I've noticed that I associate the soft life with things like fitness, going on walks, like going on a trail, because I associate going on walks with like having free time, like having the luxury of having free time. And then the Starbucks thing, that means that I associate the soft life with being able to afford going to a coffee shop. Because I remember one thing that used to get me very upset when I was with Dusty Exes was they would make fun of me or put me down and say it was a waste of money to go to a coffee shop. But for me, it's not just about the coffee shop. It's about the vibes. It's about me like drinking a nice latte. I like the energy boost that I get from lattes and stuff like iced lattes. And so I associate the soft life with things like being able to afford lattes, being able to afford to go to Trader Joe's, not having to do all of my shopping at Walmart or a food bank. And by the way, no shade if you're doing those things. I'm actually about to go to Walmart next week. I need to get some new tennis shoes. I know that's really random. But anyway, 
I associate the soft life with having free time. So the reason that I'm talking about this, like beauty hobbies and soft life, it's because I'm trying to help you guys in the Pretty Girl Club to get your mindset off of the stress of work or like how much guys suck or like all these fake friends around you. No, I want us over here to be able to focus on ourselves and to be able to focus on the positive aspects of our own life. And so that's why I'm talking about beauty hobbies because I associate beauty hobbies with the soft life. Having the time to condition your hair for two hours, having the time to sit under a hooded dryer, having the time to experiment with flexi rods, and then you don't even have to go anywhere. You just have the luxury of free time to experiment with your beauty. Speaking of beauty hobbies, one of my other beauty hobbies is I have a fascination with hair gels. I don't know why, I just love hair gels. So far, no hair gel has not worked on my hair, except for Eco Styler. That shit is trash. But to be fair though, the one time I tried Eco Styler, it was when I was in college and I had it for over a year and it was just kind of sitting in my cabinet. So maybe it was like clumped up or it was hard or something. Um, but other than that, every single hair gel I've ever used has worked really well on my hair. So one of my other beauty hobbies is let's say I'm in a Walmart or I'm in a CVS or some random store and I see a hair gel that I've never tried before, especially if I'm in the dollar store. Don't even get me started with the dollar store because that's another one of my beauty, beauty hobbies. But if I see a hair gel and it says like, you know, this is gonna make your hair look wet, like the wet line extreme gel or whatever. So I recently tried that, um, it was cool. So there was one wet line gel that I tried. It wasn't as good, but the one that I have right now is the purple one. That one works. So I'm assuming the wet line gel is supposed to make my hair look wet. So that is what it does on my hair. I really like it. But one of my beauty hobbies is I love to experiment with cheap hair gels just whenever I'm out. Like if I see one that I've never used before, like when I was in Mexico with my family, I got a couple of hair gels, I got some deep conditioning masks, and I don't know why, but the cheap products work really well on me. So all the girls who um, they rave about Miel, like Miel Organics, a lot of my friends talk about that brand. I have never actually tried that brand because I don't have anything against it, but it's just, it's out of my price range. I'm sorry, I'm just, I have to spend like $5 or less. Well, actually, okay, if it's a salon product, then I'm willing to spend more money, but if it's a natural hair product, I've noticed that the very cheap items work the best on me. So like silicone mix, that's $5. That works really well on me. The Tio Nacho or Uncle Nacho, those conditioners and stuff, they're about $5. Those work really well. But that's another one of my beauty hobbies. It's thinking about what hairstyle do I wanna do? What hair treatment do I wanna do? So right now I told you guys, just yesterday actually was the first day that I started my curl training journey. So I do this uh, usually around the summertime because sometimes in the summer, I don't wanna wear like wigs and stuff every day. So sometimes if it's summertime and especially if I'm going swimming, I will just wear my hair in kind of that wet, the wet and wavy look, I don't know. So sometimes I like to do little hair challenges where I'm like, okay, for the next month, I'm gonna like grow my hair out really long. So by the way, one of you guys in the Discord asked about curl training or heat training your hair is another term for it. I personally have never had a problem with heat training. Um, my hair has never broken off from heat. The only time my hair became really thin from heat was when I was a teenager and I was using the hot comb every single day because obviously I didn't know any better. But other than that, I've never had a problem with using heat. So I am going to be training my curls and I've actually seen girls do it multiple ways. So two of my friends in high school, they had a similar mix to me, but they were black, white, Native American. So like no Latin American. And the way that they would do it is they would have a wash and go. So just washing their hair and their textures were like 3B, like 3A to 3B. Well, actually their texture was like 3B and they both took it from like 3B to 3A. I think the other sister, her hair was more of like a 3C and she took it to about a 3B. So I know that some people consider that to be damaged, but the way that they did it was they would do their normal wash and goes and they would put their gel in it and stuff. And when their hair was about 90% dry, they would run over the the length of their hair with a flat iron. I know it sounds very scary. I That's what I thought the first time that I saw 
them do it. So their hair was still wet and it had some gel in it and they warmed up the flat iron and they just did a couple of swipes, maybe four swipes on their whole head, not like taking one inch of hair and straightening it, not like that, but just like four swipes. So the flat iron was on their hair no more than about five seconds total. And so at first I was like, that seems pointless and damaging. Um, but I did notice after about four months, my one friend who was doing the, the flat iron thing, her curls naturally became just a little bit looser, but her hair was all the way to like waist length. So I don't consider that to be damaged. It was still very thick. Um, you guys can say whatever you want about her using gel. It worked for her. She didn't have any problems with it. So the way that I view training is kind of naturally stretching the curls. And it's so funny because I, I've talked about this before and I noticed the 4C girls, they got mad when I was talking about it and they were like, no, we don't want to stretch our hair. Nobody wants their hair to be looser, blah, blah, blah. And I was thinking, well, then why is stretching your hair like a really major thing in the natural hair community? Some people stretch their hair because it is easier for them to manage. That's not me throwing shade at 4C hair. I'm not trying to say like, oh my God, you know, it sucks if your hair is like very coarse. I'm not trying to say it like that. I was just saying that yes, other women themselves who had 4C hair or even 3C hair, have told me, oh, I'm gonna like loosen it or whatever because it's, it is making it very manageable. So for me, even at my three, three B hair texture, I think I'm a three B, but whatever. Um, even with that hair texture, I am going to be stretching out my curls because for the summertime, I like kind of that wet curly look where it's like you just got out of the shower or something. So the way that I tend to stretch my hair is I just brush it straight back with like a, uh, the boar bristle, boar, oh my God, I can't talk. The boar bristle brush, I think that's what it's called. It's this brush right here. So you know the brush that guys use to get waves and stuff. So whenever I slick my hair back, it becomes straight. So like, I don't know how to explain it, but my hair becomes straight when I brush it. Um, so that's one of the ways I train my curls. I like to loosen them. I know a lot of girls like doing pineapples, but I noticed that pineapples, it can make my hair kind of break in the back. And I think part of it is because of where the, the hair tie sits on my head. If I want to stretch out my curls, I usually do a low ponytail because I'm training my hair to lay down flat on my head. And I do that because I'm trying to wear my hair down and curly, not up and curly. So I guess if you're more of an updo curly girl or an updo natural, then yeah, maybe you would want to train it to naturally go up. But I noticed I like mine to go down. And if I wear it in a pineapple too much, then it, it doesn't train itself to go down my back as much. It, it kind of wants to shrink a little bit. But anyway, that's my random rant about curl stretching, that's going to be one of my uh, beauty hobbies or kind of like uh, curl lengthening. I don't know what else I can use to describe it, but I like doing that. I'm also going to be getting some, uh, maybe some tea or some different like herbs and stuff to continue to accelerate the growth. Oh, side note, have you guys used the inversion method? Because that really works. Like I've done it before. It actually does work. I'm just too lazy to hang my head over my bed for like five minutes a day. But that's another thing that I've used in the past as one of my beauty hobbies was, uh, it was like natural hair stuff. That was one of my beauty hobbies and I'm gonna start doing it a little bit more as I get towards summer. But what are your beauty hobbies? What parts of your beauty do you enjoy caring for? Are you one of those people who is into lotions and body butters? Because by the way, that's another one of my beauty hobbies. I love like looking into different lotions. You guys actually introduced me to that Kojic Acid Lotion. It's kind of like a natural uh, skin brightening lotion. It's not like a Michael Jackson thing. Like you're not going to become a white person, but I would say that it works a little bit better than vitamin C. So I love like looking into different lotions and body butters and like how they work on my skin, like how smooth it makes my legs look and how tight it makes my skin. Because you guys know that like once you get older, your skin can sag. Also, depending on your weight and your diet, um, you can struggle with things like cellulite or stretch marks and stuff. So for me, it's important to use different body lotions and body butters to make sure that I don't have any of those things, especially when it's about to get hot soon and like I'm gonna be wearing shorts and stuff. But that's another one of my beauty hobbies. I love going on Amazon and just searching for different lotions and seeing if they actually work. So by the way, side note, Brazilian Bum Bum Cream is one of the ones that I'm looking into right now. I haven't purchased it yet. 
what do you guys think of Brazilian bum bum cream? Have you ever tried it? Um, I was thinking about trying it, but I'm also trying to find a dupe because I use this other body scrub that was like for your butt area and it's supposed to make your butt really smooth. It's basically like a butt polish and it worked really well. So now I'm trying to find some sort of replacement, but um, that's one of the creams I'm looking into. I haven't got it yet though. But I want you to think about the times when you felt the most beautiful. What were your hobbies? What was your day-to-day -day life like? What types of people were you around? Or were you a little bit more independent, a little bit more isolated than normal? I noticed that with me, I thrive when I have privacy. I thrive when people are not like all up in my business, when I'm not constantly around friends and family members. I thrive when I have at least some time to uh, kind of do my own thing and make my mistakes in private. I don't actually like when people are constantly watching me and constantly commenting on my life. So I know that for me, um, when I felt the most beautiful, it was when I was single or when I was unmarried or when I was like, you know, cutting off toxic friendships. I wasn't revolving my life around anyone else but me. Something else that always helps me to feel feminine and beautiful is getting myself flowers. I remember when I was poor, like when I was very poor, and I had no extra money, I used to be jealous of girls that could buy a coffee at the Starbucks, the girls that could afford to buy flowers at the grocery store because I didn't have the extra money to afford those things. Yes, I would literally go broke if I spent an extra $5. That would be coming out of my bill money. And so that's why I tend to associate smaller things like flowers with living a soft life and with making myself feel special. Because back when I had no money, I used to think one day I'm going to be able to get flowers at the grocery store. One day I'm going to be able to afford to get Starbucks whenever I want. But I know that for me, getting flowers is something that makes me feel very feminine and beautiful. I associate flowers with luxury. I associate real flowers with the soft life. So by the way, happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, so this weekend was St. Patrick's Day weekend. And so I ended up going to a St. Patrick's Day celebration. Um, by the way, Irish is one of the many smaller admixtures in my background. So shout out to my beautiful Pretty Girl Club members who have Irish admixture. I hope you did something to incorporate that part of your background into your life. Um, so I don't usually celebrate the Irish admixture because it's a little bit smaller. And plus, I can't really think of many holidays that have to do with the Irish people. So St. Patrick's Day came up and I went to a St. Patrick's Day celebration. I wore my green. It was really cute. And I also went to the grocery store and I got myself some green flowers to celebrate that part of my ancestry. That is me validating my beauty because I believe that I have the right to love every part of myself. So yes, that includes the smaller parts of myself. Just like how you love your hands, you take care of your hands. Your hands are a small part of your body. Your feet are a small part of your body, but you still take care of them, right? So I choose to love every part of myself and every part of my ancestry, every part of my background. I choose to celebrate that. So I actually went to the store this weekend and I got myself a green and white bouquet of flowers just to put in my kitchen and that made me feel beautiful like I was living the soft life. And yes, I felt very feminine and girly when I was walking out of the store with my flowers. It's to the point where I'm literally going to buy flowers for myself every time I go grocery shopping. And I also like to get flowers that are like matching up with the season. So springtime or like St. Patrick's Day. Maybe around Christmas time, I'll get some Christmas plants or something like that. So that is something that also makes me feel beautiful. I consider that to be a beauty hobby because yes, it does make me feel physically beautiful to walk out of a store and I have my groceries, but I also have a bouquet of flowers. It's kind of like I'm sending a subconscious message to everyone around me that I am special. My apartment and the place that I live is beautiful and I believe that I'm beautiful enough and abundant enough to be able to buy myself flowers. By the way, the flowers aren't even expensive. I literally, I've never spent, I think more than like $5 on the flowers, but still that actually boosts my mindset. It actually boosts my self-esteem over time ever since I've started doing it. And yes, I feel beautiful when I'm walking out of the store with flowers in my hand or like with some pretty flowers popping out of my grocery bags. It makes me feel beautiful, classy, and like I'm just a feminine goddess. 
But if you can think of the times when you feel the most beautiful, what beauty hobbies are you participating in? What beauty rituals are you doing that are making you feel beautiful? And I'm asking you that because here at Pretty Girl University, I want us to start teaching ourselves how to pamper ourselves consistently, how to live the soft life at any relationship status, no matter if you're single, doesn't matter if you're rich or poor. Um, I associate beauty hobbies with living the soft life. Because I feel like sometimes when people promote the soft life, they promote it like it's unattainable. And I believe that you can do practical things right now, today, that will make you feel like you're living the soft life. And I know that for me, beauty hobbies are a really big part of that. Like another one of my beauty hobbies is doing my manicures and doing my pedicures and taking out my little gemstones and my rhinestones and putting them on my nails. And doing it in a way where it's like, I didn't have to pay a bunch of money to go get my nails and toes professionally done. For some of you guys, you may want to do that. But for me, I like to get the little nail kits and stuff and just keep it at my apartment. And then whenever I'm like in the mood to pamper myself, I can just take out my nail kit and start doing my gel manicure. And then I can put like a little water decal on it or something. And that makes me feel beautiful. I associate having well manicured nails and toes with being beautiful. Another one of my beauty hobbies is I love skincare tools. So you know, like the jade rollers, um, the gua sha, I like stuff like that because it really does help my face to like not be puffy. Um, I even do cupping, like I've done face cupping. I've even done body cupping like at the spa. I'm also planning on buying some cups to use on my legs because it helps your legs to not have cellulite. It helps your skin and stuff to remain firm so that as you're working out and building muscle and maybe losing weight, um, you don't have to worry about getting a whole bunch of stretch marks and like having a bunch of problems with the skin on your body. So that's another one of my beauty hobbies. I like using skincare tools. I've also seen how they have like that little ice thing that you can put on your skin. I've never tried that, but I've been kind of looking into stuff like that. But those are some of my beauty hobbies. What are your beauty hobbies and how have they helped you to embrace your beauty more? Let me know what you think in the comment section and I'll talk to you next time. Stay pretty ladies.